In this video, I want to briefly talk about pre-colonial African history. Uh, now, if I had one criticism to make of people who who kind of do video videos and books and articles and whatnot about pre-colonial African history, my criticism would be that often it can be a little bit limited or the the scope of their discussions can be kind of limited to just bringing up examples just basic examples of kingdoms and empires and so forth in Africa prior to you know the coming of colonialism and the coming of the Europeans often you'll have uh, people talking about oh you know look at this great civilization that we had look at uh, look at the kingdom of kush and look at the kingdom of kemet and look at the kingdom of zimbabwe and look at the kingdom of songhai and ghana and mali and so on which is fine you know that's all good it's all good to do that's all good to know about those kingdoms because damn you know often people don't have even have a clue about those kingdoms but as I said, I, f I feel that some of that, uh, some of these discussions are a bit simplistic because it's just on a surface level of look how great this, these kings were, look how great these queens were, look how fabulously big these cities were, look how you know, look look how um, look how strong these armies were, and so on. But one of the things that's that's missing really is a discussion of how these kingdoms and empires, what what kinds of uh, Overall, what kind of productivity, what kind of lives were people generally, generally, generally living in those countries, in those kingdoms, and particularly what the question, the reason I'm asking that is to is to, to to ask that I think we need as Africans, we need to honestly ask ourselves why is it that Europe was able to come in, the Europeans were able to come in and colonize the continent eventually. And, you know, one of the best ways that we can understand that question is to talk about the fact that prior to the coming of the Europeans, Africa was not just one big blob that where everybody was the same, living some sort of African life. Rather, there were, and this, this is the point really I'm, I'm making in this video, is that pre-colonial African history was, gave us, it gives us a picture of unevenness. So this is a common kind of map that you might see of pre-colonial African history. And you'll see some of the kingdoms that I talked about earlier, some of the empires, some of the people groups, uh, the Akan here, Benin, Nok, the Nok culture. In the north, of course, you had a lot of big, uh, you know, states and empires and so forth, particularly with the coming of Islam. Uh, then you've got the kingdom of Aksum here on the on the in the East, east, east and northeast of Africa, the Bachwezi there in Uganda, the Luba states, the Lunda, the Kit Congo and Zimbabwe, and there's others as well, but these are some of the main ones that people talk about. Now, my people, I, I'm, a, I'm a Mugisu, technically speaking, no, I am a Mugisu, I'm a, which means I'm, a, I'm from a tribe called the Bagisu people, and we don't and never have had a kingdom, you know, We've never had a centralized rulership structure. We've never had an empire. We've never really had anything like that. We're, a, we're agricultural people, but we, you know, we're, we're very decentralized people that didn't have anything like, for example, what the, the what the um, Baganda people and the, the, the people of the Bonyoro kingdoms, they had a centralized kingdoms with kings and rulers and, and all this kind of stuff. We didn't have that. And that's a really good, up close and personal example to me as to how different some of the peoples and the peoples in Africa are. The levels of development are very different. The levels, the types of rulership structures are very different. And thus the types of social organization amongst the different, all the many, many different African people, the people groups within this massive continent of Africa are very different. Now, if you haven't already read this book called How Europe Underdeveloped Africa by Dr. Walter Rodney, written in, I think, 1972 or three, then I really would suggest that you read this book if you're interested in, in understanding, first of all, how Europe underdeveloped Africa. But one of the more interesting things about this book is that 
uh, Rodney gives a very honest appraisal of how societies were developing within Africa, in his understanding, prior to the coming of the Europeans. And I'm going to quote to you one section from that book, which I think is instructive to us. Uh, this is in, oh, so I didn't note down the chapter, actually. Uh, I think it's in chapter, let's have a look. Yeah, chapter, chapter two. And it's called How Africa Developed Before the Coming of the Europeans Up to the 15th Century. And then the, what he does, he goes through a list. He, he talks about various uh, people groups in across the continent. And in this conclusion here, he, he, he says this. He says, quote, in introducing the concept of development, attention was drawn to the fact that the slow, imperceptible expansion in, spo in social productive capacity ultimately amounted to a qualitative difference. With the arrival at the new stage sometimes being announced by social violence. It can be said that most African societies had not reached a new stage that was markedly different from communalism and hence the, the use in the study of the cautious term, cautious term trans, transitional. It can also be noted that nowhere had there been any internal social revolutions, the latter having haven't taken place, the latter have taken place in European and world history, only where class consciousness led to the massive intervention of people's wills within the otherwise involuntary socio-economic process. Such observ now this is the key thing here, Sub such observations helped to situate African development up to the 15th century at a level that was below mature, class-ridden feudalism. And so what he, the, the point he's he's making here is just that exactly that that most of Africa ha hadn't really re hadn't reached the stage of feudalism, whereas Europe and Asia Asian peoples had reached the state at least the level of feudalism by fifteen hundred, and the more advanced European states areas were transitioning into capitalism by the fifteen hundreds, and. I think that's that's one of the things that we as Africans need to talk about with regard to a pre-colonial African history. There were some more advanced areas of the continent when you're talking about, if you're talking about development, then development you're obviously talking about kind of progress and building up your productive forces, building up your ability to uh, to, to basically produce goods, to produce uh, wealth, to, sh you know, to distribute wealth, to, you know, to, to organize your society, to expand, to take control over your environment and so forth. There were some areas that were more developed than others and i say that as being a member of a group which you would probably say you know wasn't as developed as some of the other groups as far as state you know developing yourselves into a state and all that kind of stuff but um but yeah none of the none of the parts of, of africa really had got, had got to the stage where they had you know developed to the level of feudalism now to me this this helps us to kind of start to understand first of all how today some area, some parts of africa are more developed than some other parts of africa um but i think it's just it's just important for us really just to have a, a, a good understanding a proper understanding of what was taking place prior to the coming of the europeans and then the next question of course we will we'll need to ask ourselves is why why is it that some areas in africa had developed more quickly than certain other areas you know why is it for example that the ethiopians uh, you know the kingdoms of Aksum and and uh, you know the, the successor states over there in 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 in, Eth in the Ethiopia region. Why had they developed in such a way? Whereas some of the other parts, people say in further south, say the um, the Twa people. We talked about the Twa people recently. Were, you know, allegedly going off to Ireland to you know to to set up their religions over there. What, what why was that difference there between those groups? Anyway. Hope you've uh, kind of got what I'm trying to get at in this video. Um, let me know your thoughts on that. I'm going to follow this up, of, of course, with further thoughts. Again, subscribe to the YouTube channel. It's Africans Arise. Click subscribe there. Go to the Facebook page, which is Africans Arise Now. Let me know your thoughts, and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.